Transphobia is a range of negative attitudes, feelings or actions toward transgender or transsexual people, or toward transsexuality. Transphobia can be emotional disgust, fear, violence, anger, or discomfort felt or expressed towards people who do not conform to society's gender expectation. It is often expressed alongside homophobic views and hence is often considered an aspect of homophobia. Transphobia is a type of prejudice and discrimination similar to racism and sexism, and transgender people of color are often subjected to all three forms of discrimination at once. Child victims of transphobia experience harassment, school bullying, and violence in school, foster care, and social programs. Adult victims experience public ridicule, harassment including misgendering, taunts, threats of violence, robbery, and false arrest. Many feel unsafe in public. A high percentage report being victims of sexual violence. Some are refused health care or suffer workplace discrimination, including being fired for being transgender, or feel under siege by conservative political or religious groups who oppose laws to protect them. There is even discrimination from some people within the movement for the rights of gender and sexual minorities. Besides the increased risk of violence and other threats, the stress created by transphobia can cause negative emotional consequences which may lead to substance abuse, running away from home in minors, and a higher rate of suicide. In the Western world, there have been gradual changes towards the establishment of policies of non-discrimination and equal opportunity. The trend is also taking shape in developing nations. In addition, campaigns regarding the LGBT community are being spread around the world to improve acceptance. The Stop the Stigma campaign by the UN is one such development. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Etymology and Use. The word transphobia is a classical compound patterned on the term homophobia, sharing its second component phobia from the Greek phobos phobos, fear. The first component is the neoclassical prefix trans from transgender originally meaning across, on the far side, beyond. Along with lesbophobia, biphobia, homophobia and transphobia are members of the family of terms used when intolerance and discrimination is directed toward LGBT people. Transphobia need not be a phobia as defined in clinical psychology i.e., an anxiety disorder. Its meaning and use typically parallel those of xenophobia. The adjectival form transphobic describes things or qualities related to transphobia, and the noun transphobe denotes someone who harbors transphobia. The words transphobia and transphobic were added to the Oxford English Dictionary in 2013, together with transperson, transman, transwoman. Topic: <laughs> Origins. Transfeminist theorist and author Julia Serrano argues in her book Whipping Girl that transphobia is rooted in sexism, and locates the origins of both transphobia and homophobia in what she calls, "...oppositional sexism", the belief that male and female are, "...rigid, mutually exclusive categories, each possessing a unique and non-overlapping set of attributes, aptitudes, abilities, and desires." Serrano contrasts oppositional sexism with traditional sexism", the belief that males and masculinity are superior to females and femininity. Furthermore, she writes that transphobia is fueled by insecurities people have about gender and gender norms. Other transgender rights authors argue that a significant part of the oppositional sexist origin of transphobia, and especially of the forms that incite violence towards transsexual people, is linked to psychological claims of difference between male sexuality and female sexuality in the brain's protection mechanisms from committing sex crimes. These authors argue that the assumption that men's acceptable sexuality is based on category-specific sexual arousal while women's acceptable sexual behavior is said to be due to lower sex drive and especially higher sexual inhibitions causes allegations that transsexual people have neither safety system in the brain and are sex criminals, and recommend information about flaws in studies that claim to show such sex differences including the possibility that fear of being alleged to be inappropriately sexually aroused may deter more men than women from taking taking part in sexual arousal studies as a remedy the transgender author and critic Jody Norton believes that transphobia is an extension of homophobia and misogyny she argues that transgender people like gays and lesbians are hated and feared for challenging and undermining gender norms and the gender binary Norton writes that the 
Male to female transgender incites transphobia through her implicit challenge to the binary division of gender upon which male cultural and political hegemony depends. Topic: <laughs> Related concepts. The related concept of cissexism, also termed cisgenderism, cisnormativity or cissexual assumption, occasionally used synonymously with transphobia, is the appeal to norms that enforce the gender binary and gender essentialism, resulting in the oppression of gender variant, non-binary, and transgender identities. Cisgenderism refers to the assumption that, due to human sexual differentiation, one's gender is determined solely by a biological sex of male or female, based on the assumption that all people must have either an XX or XY sex chromosome pair, or, in the case of cisgenderism, a bivalent male or female expression, and that trans people are inferior to cisgender people due to being in defiance of nature. Harassment and violence directed against transgender people is often called trans bashing, and can be physical, sexual or verbal. Whereas gay bashing is directed against a target's real or perceived sexual orientation, trans bashing is directed against the target's real or perceived expressed gender identity. The term has also been applied to hate speech directed at transgender people and to depictions of transgender people in the media that reinforce negative stereotypes about them. Notable victims of violent crimes motivated by transphobia include Brandon Tina, Gwen Araujo, Angie Zapata, Niza Morris, and Lauren Harris. Transprejudice is a term similar to transphobia, and refers to the negative valuing, stereotyping, and discriminatory treatment of individuals whose appearance and or identity does not conform to current social expectations or conventional conceptions of gender. Manifestations. <laughs> <laughs> Topic. Harassment and violence As homophobia and transphobia are correlated, many trans people experience homophobia and heterosexism. This is due to people who associate trans people's gender identity with homosexuality, or because trans people may also have a sexual orientation that is non heterosexual. Author Thomas Speakerbo stated, transgender people subjected to violence, in a range of cultural contexts, frequently report that transphobic violence is expressed in homophobic terms. Quote, Attacking someone on the basis of a perception of their gender identity rather than a perception of their sexual orientation is known as trans bashing, analogous to gay bashing. According to the American Psychological Association, transgender children are more likely than other children to experience harassment and violence in school, foster care, residential treatment centers, homeless centers and juvenile justice programs. Researchers say trans youth routinely experience taunting, teasing and bullying at school, and that nearly all trans youth say they were verbally or physically harassed in school, particularly during gym class, at school events, or when using single-sex restrooms. Three quarters report having felt unsafe. As adults, transgender people are frequently subjected to ridicule, stares, taunting, and threats of violence, even when just walking down the street or walking into a store. A U.S. survey of 402 older, employed, high income transgender people found that 60% reported violence or harassment because of their gender identity. 56% had been harassed or verbally abused, 30% had been assaulted, 17% had had objects thrown at them, 14% had been robbed and 8% had experienced what they characterized as an unjustified arrest. A study of 81 transgender people in Philadelphia found 30% reported feeling unsafe in public because they were transgender, with 19% feeling uncomfortable for the same reason. When asked if they had ever been forced to have sex, experienced violence in their home, or been physically abused, the majority answered yes to each question. A review of American studies on sexual violence towards transgender people found that it is shockingly common. And while reported rates vary considerably among studies for methodological and other reasons the most common finding is that around 50% of transgender people have been sexually assaulted. When transgender people are murdered, they are often shot, struck or stabbed repeatedly. Topic. Sexual violence In 2009 researcher Rebecca L. Stotzer published an article in Aggression and Violent Behavior that compiled information from numerous studies reporting violence against transgender people. 
In the article Stotzer noted that transgender people have a high risk of experiencing sexual violence throughout their lifetimes. Physical violence Perpetrators of physical violence against transgender people are reported to have been influenced by negative attitudes against transgender people, many of whom do not report their assault to the police. Misgendering and exclusion Misgendering is the experience of being labeled by others with a gender that does not match one's gender identity. Misgendering can be deliberate or accidental. It ordinarily takes the form of a person using pronouns to describe someone that are not the ones they use, calling a person, ma'am, or sir, in contradiction to the person's gender identity, using a pre-transition name for someone instead of a post-transition one, called deadnaming, or insisting that a person must adhere to the roles or norms assigned to their sex rather than the ones that align with their gender identity, for example, using a bathroom designated for males even though the person identifies as female. Transgender people are often excluded from entitlements or privileges reserved for people whose gender identity they share, but whose assigned gender they do not. It is very common, for example, for transgender women to be stopped or questioned when they use public bathrooms designated for women. Homeless shelters, hospitals and prisons have denied trans women admission to women's areas and forced them to sleep and bathe in the presence of men. Transgender people may also be denied service in restaurants, for example members of the Transgender Education Network of Texas and the Transgender Law Center were "...denied service." at the Elliston Place IHOP in Nashville, Tennessee, on May 21, 2018, leading to staff retraining. The experience of being misgendered is common for all transgender people before they transition, and for many afterwards as well. Transgender people are regularly misgendered by doctors, police, media and peers, experiences that they have described as mortifying, hurtful, especially to transgender youth, cruel, and only making our lives harder. Deliberately misgendering a transgender person is considered extremely offensive by transgender individuals. As users of healthcare A study of 81 transgender people in Philadelphia found 14% said they had been refused routine medical care because they were transgender, 18% answered yes when asked if, when they went in for a checkup, being transgendered created a problem. For them, transgender people depend largely on the medical profession to receive not only hormone replacement therapy, but also vital care. In one case, Robert Eads died of ovarian cancer after being refused treatment by more than two dozen doctors. In the United States-based National Center for Transgender Equality's 2011 survey, 19% had been refused medical care due to their transgender or gender non-conforming status, showing that refusal of treatment due to transphobia is not uncommon. Another example of this is the case of Tyra Hunter. Hunter was involved in an automobile accident, and when rescue workers discovered she was transgender, they backed away and stopped administering treatment. She later died in a hospital. In many European countries, laws require that any transgender person who wishes to change their legal gender must first be sterilized. Sweden repealed its law in December 2012, and the European Court of Human Rights struck down such laws in 2017. Topic: In the workplace. Transphobia also manifests itself in the workplace. Some transgender people lose their jobs when they begin to transition. A study from Willamette University stated that a transgender person fired for following the recommended course of treatment rarely wins it back through federal or state statutes. News stories from the San Francisco Chronicle and Associated Press cite a 1999 study by the San Francisco Department of Public Health finding a 70% unemployment rate amongst the city's transgender population. On February 18, 1999, the San Francisco Department of Public Health issued the results of a 1997 survey of 392 trans women and 123 trans men, which found that 40% of those trans women surveyed had earned money from full or part-time employment over the preceding six months. For trans men, the equivalent statistic was 81%. 
The survey also found that 46% of trans women and 57% of trans men reported employment discrimination. A 2002 American study found that among educators, trans educators are 10 to 20% more likely to experience workplace harassment than their gay and lesbian colleagues. In the hiring process, discrimination may be either open or covert, with employers finding other ostensible reasons not to hire a candidate or just not informing prospective employees at all as to why they are not being hired. Additionally, when an employer fires or otherwise discriminates against a transgender employee, it may be a mixed motive case, with the employer openly citing obvious wrongdoing, job performance issues or the like such as excessive tardiness, for example, while keeping silent in regards to transphobia. Employment discrimination on the basis of gender identity and expression is illegal in some U.S. cities, towns and states. Such discrimination is outlawed by specific legislation in the state of New Jersey and might be in other states as it is in the states of California, Illinois, Maine, Minnesota, New Mexico and Washington or city ordinances. Additionally, it is covered by case law in some other states. For example, Massachusetts is covered by cases such as Lie versus Sky Publishing Co. and Yetta versus Honey Farms. Several other states and cities prohibit such discrimination in public employment. Sweden and the United Kingdom has also legislated against employment discrimination on the grounds of gender identity. Sometimes, however, employers discriminate against transgender employees in spite of such legal protections, as an example of a high profile employment related court case unfavorable to transgender people. In 2000, the southern U.S. grocery chain Winn Dixie fired longtime employee Peter Euler, despite a history of repeatedly earning raises and promotions, after management learned that the married, heterosexual truck driver occasionally cross dressed off the job. Management argued that this hurt Winn Dixie's corporate image. The American Civil Liberties Union filed a lawsuit against Winn Dixie on behalf of Euler, but a judge dismissed it. Sometimes transgender people facing employment discrimination turn to sex work to survive, placing them at additional risk of such things as encountering troubles with the law, including arrest and criminal prosecution, enduring workplace violence, and possibly contracting sexually transmitted diseases such as HIV. The transgender community faces huge amount of employment discrimination due to their gender identity, and there are very few few laws that protect the employment rights of this community. It results in limited career options for the transgender community leaving them economically vulnerable. A study conducted by Annalise Singh and Vel McLeroy on transgender people of color revealed that difficulty finding a job or losing a job due to transphobia in workplace resulted in some of the transgender people living in crime-ridden neighborhoods, and getting involved in abusive relationships. Lack of employment has also resulted in the transgender community resorting to illegal activities like selling drugs or sex work for the income support. Topic. From government Transgender people also face the denial of right of asylum or inhuman treatment in process of asylum seeking. For example, Fernanda Milan, a transgender woman from Guatemala was placed in an asylum center for males in Denmark and while there, was raped by several men. She was in danger of deportation into Guatemala where transgender people have no rights and face possible execution, but has since been granted entry. Transgender disenfranchisement is the practice of creating or upholding barriers that keep transgender individuals from voting and therefore restrict the principles of universal suffrage. Topic. In education Within the school system, many transgender teens are harassed and mistreated with reported negative effects on both victim and the school's population in general. Transgender youth frequently report fear and anxiety about using restrooms and locker rooms at school because they had experienced harassment by both peers and adults when using them. Over 80% of transgender teens report feeling unsafe in a school environment, more than 40% report having been physically abused, and over 65% report being bullied online or via social media. Through official channels, such discrimination is generally underreported. A study done on Canadian high school students between December 2007 and June 2009 illustrated how the LGBTQ students feel unsafe at the school, and are exposed to insults and discrimination by their peers and sometimes even by their teachers. Even the heterosexual students and the teachers fear the attack by transphobia on account of supporting or having a transgender friend or family. 
Most of the administrators and educators are unaware about the extent of damage that has been caused to the transgender students on account of underestimating the gravity of transphobia in their schools. From the religious right Christianity The Christian right in North America, including organizations such as the American Family Association, Family Research Council, Focus on the Family, National Association for Research and Therapy of Homosexuality believe that transgenderism is unnatural and that transgender people are and remain their birth sex, and they oppose laws and policies intended to accommodate transgender people, such as allowing them to change their legal sex, use the washroom corresponding to the gender with which they identify, or become ordained Christian ministers. They say that God created people's bodies as they are meant to be, that accepting transgender people would violate scripture and natural law, and that the Bible refers to male and female. According to the Ontario Consultants for Religious Tolerance website, under Pope John Paul II, the Vatican first stated its opposition to reassignment surgery in 2000, although it was not made public until 2003. Transgender people face particular challenges in attempting to integrate their faith with their gender identity. One author says, Expectations based on gender are usually predicated upon our genitalia and begin from the moment of birth, continuing throughout our lives." Many Christian denominations use biblical notions of gender and gender roles to support their views. These include so God created man in his own image in the image of God he created him male and female he created them Genesis chapter 1 verse 27 and the woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man neither shall a man put on a woman's garment for all that do so are an abomination unto the Lord thy God Deuteronomy chapter 22 verse 5 views of gender identity based on the Christian faith do not always coincide with the ideologies of transgender individuals However, if they do not conform to these expectations, they may face rejection. Many transgender Christians seek out an individualized relationship with God, often facing a period of denial and struggle as well as depression, disconnection, dissatisfaction, and spiritual difficulty before discovering a sense of self that feels integral and true. However, after discovering their gender identity, many transgender individuals still face barriers within the church such as, fear and unfamiliarity on the part of the congregation, language issues, physical layout that separates people by gender, programs that exclude or separate by gender, pathologizing or designating trans issues as sinful, and overt hostility. Islam The Islamic faith ordinarily supports a heteronormative binary of gender identification which is reinforced by their cultural norms and traditional readings of sacred texts which prohibit the wide range of identities that are present in today's society. Transgender men and women are acknowledged and accepted in many Islamic cultures around the world. In actuality, the idea of a man or woman identifying as a member of the opposite gender is more likely to be approved than that of a man or woman expressing sexual desire for someone of their own gender. In 1988, gender reassignment surgery was declared acceptable under Islamic law by scholars at Egypt's Al-Azhar, the world's oldest Islamic university. In Iran during 1987, Ayatollah Khomeini, the supreme religious leader of the Islamic Republic of Iran at that time, also declared transgender surgical operations as acceptable see transsexuality in Iran. The foundation for this accepting attitude is the belief that a person is born transgender but chooses to be homosexual, thus making homosexuality a sin. Nonetheless, transgender individuals within the Muslim community still face particular challenges. Some communities of worship are more tolerant. Muslims for Progressive Values has founded Unity Mosques in Atlanta, Georgia, Columbus, Ohio, and Los Angeles, California. The Muslim Alliance for Sexual and Gender Diversity hosts an annual retreat for LGBTQ+ Muslims in Pennsylvania each May. Topic: In feminism Some positions within feminism have been considered transphobic. This may include criticism of transitioning or sex reassignment surgery as a personal choice or medical invention, or the position that trans women are not women in a literal sense and should not be in women only spaces. Second wave feminist and activist Gloria Steinem expressed concerns in 1977 about transsexuality and sex reassignment surgery, writing that in many cases, transsexuals 
surgically mutilate their own bodies. She concluded that, feminists are right to feel uncomfortable about the need for and uses of transsexualism. For some years, this led to Steinem being characterized as transphobic. In 2013, she repudiated the interpretation of her text as an altogether condemnation of SRS, stating that her position was informed by accounts of gay men choosing to transition as a way of coping with societal homophobia. She added that she sees transgender people as living authentic lives that should be celebrated. Radical feminist Janice Raymond's 1979 book, The Transsexual Empire, was and still is controversial due to its unequivocal condemnation of transsexual surgeries. In the book Raymond says, "...all transsexuals rape women's bodies by reducing the real female form to an artifact, appropriating this body for themselves." Transsexuals merely cut off the most obvious means of invading women, so that they seem non-invasive." Raymond authored a paper in the 1980s which the United States Department of Health and Human Services allegedly used to deny trans people access to transgender-specific health care. Raymond repudiated this claim, pointing out that her submission was mentioned only in one sentence of a 15 page final report. Another site of conflict between feminists and trans women has been the Michigan Women's Music Festival. In the early 1990s, the festival ejected a transsexual woman, Nancy Burkholder. In 2014, the festival passionately rejected accusations that it believed transgender women are less than other women. The activist group Camp Trans had protested the woman born woman intention and advocated for greater acceptance of trans women within the feminist community. The festival had considered allowing only post operative trans women to attend, however, this was criticized as classist, as many trans women cannot afford sex reassignment surgery. Trans women such as Sandy Stone challenged the feminist conception of biological woman. Stone worked as a sound engineer for Olivia Records from about 1974 to 1978, resigning as the controversy over a trans woman working for a lesbian-identified enterprise increased. The debate continued in Raymond's book, which devoted a chapter to criticism of the transsexually constructed lesbian feminist. Groups like Lesbian Organization of Toronto then voted to exclude trans lesbians. Sheila Jeffries labeled transgenderism deeply problematic from a feminist perspective and stated that transsexualism should be seen as a violation of human rights. In 2017, with regard to the question of whether trans women are women, Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie expressed the view that trans women are trans women meaning that while she acknowledges them to face discrimination on the basis of being transgender and sees this as a serious issue, she thinks that their experiences should not be conflated with those of women who face oppression on the basis of being born female. After sustaining severe criticism for her views, Adichie opined that the American left is creating its own decline, and is very cannibalistic. She explained that she sees trans women as women despite her views, but stood behind her position. Otherwise, cisgender feminist support came from the work of poststructuralist feminist and lesbian Judith Butler, particularly her books Gender Trouble and Bodies That Matter, which argue that the violent inscription of gender as a social construct on human bodies leads to violence against those that violate such binaristic gender dichotomies. Radical feminists who hold negative views on transgender politics are commonly called TERFs, short for trans exclusionary radical feminists. Those whom the term is targeted against, in turn, have perceived their labeling as TERF to be a slur. Feminist journalist Sarah Didham, who writes for The Guardian and The New Statesman, said that the term is used to silence feminists through guilt by association. Megan Murphy, founder of Canadian feminist website Feminist Current, opined that TERF should be considered hate speech after a woman was physically assaulted and several people defended or celebrated the assault on the grounds that the woman was a TERF and as such deserving of violence. Topic: In gay, lesbian, and bisexual communities. 
Transphobia is documented in the lesbian, gay and bisexual LGB communities, despite historic cooperation between these communities in campaigns for equality, such as in the Stonewall Riots. Authors and observers, such as transgender author Gillian Todd Weiss, have written that there are social and political forces that have created a split between gay, lesbian communities and bisexual, transgender communities, and these forces have consequences for civil rights and community inclusion. Biphobia and transphobia are a result of these social and political forces, not psychological forces causing irrational fears in aberrant individuals. Topic: <laughs> Gay and lesbian communities. Historian Joanne Meyerowitz documented transphobia within the gay rights movement in the mid-20th century in response to publicity surrounding the transition of Christine Jorgensen. Jorgensen, who made frequent homophobic remarks and insisted she was not connected to or identified with gay men, was a polarizing figure among activists. In 1953, for example, one magazine published a debate among its readers as to whether gay men should denounce Jorgensen. In the opening salvo, the author Jeff Winters accused Jorgensen of a sweeping disservice to gay men. As far as the public knows, Winters wrote. You were merely another unhappy homosexual who decided to get drastic about it. For Winters, Jorgensen's story simply confirmed the false belief that all men attracted to other men must be basically feminine, which, he said, they are not. Jorgensen's precedent, he thought, encouraged the reasoning that led to legal limitations upon the homosexual, mandatory injections, psychiatric treatment, and worse, in the not-so-distant past, scientists had experimented with castrating gay men. Several prominent figures in second-wave feminism have also been accused of transphobic attitudes, culminating in 1979 with the publication of The Transsexual Empire by radical lesbian feminist Janice Raymond, who popularized the term shemale as derogatory slur referring to trans women in 1994, and her statements on transsexuality and transsexual people have been criticized by many in the LGBT and feminist communities as extremely transphobic and as constituting hate speech. In 1950. America, there was a debate among gay men and women about those who felt they were of the opposite sex. Gay men and women who were trying to melt quietly into the majority society criticized them as freaks who brought unwanted disreputable attention upon them. Such attitudes were widespread at the time. Some trans men face rejection from lesbian communities they had been part of prior to transition. Journalist Louise Rofkin writes. There are those who are feeling curiously uncomfortable standing by as friends morph into men. Sometimes there is a generational flavor to this discomfort, many in the over 40 crowd feel particular unease." Stating that this was, "...shaking the foundation of the lesbian feminist world." Trans men were part of the protest at the 2000 Michigan Women's Music Festival, the first time the woman born woman only policy has been used against trans males, women supporting the transgender community, and young gender variant women. In the early 1970s, conflicts began to emerge due to different syntheses of lesbian, feminist, and transgender political movements, particularly in the United States. San Francisco trans activist and entertainer Beth Elliott became the focus of debate over whether to include transgender lesbians in the movement, and she was eventually blacklisted by her own movement. Topic. Bisexual communities and binarism One view is that the word bisexual is transphobic, as bi means to, thus implying a belief in the binary view of gender. Some people, such as scholar Shiri Eisner, say that some make the claim that the term erases non-binary genders and sexes out of existence, as many dictionaries define bisexuality as of, relating to, or having a sexual orientation to persons of either sex, sexually attracted to both men and women, and other similar definitions. However, some bisexual individuals and scholars object to the notion that bisexuality means sexual attraction to only two genders, arguing that since bisexual is not simply about attraction to two sexes and encompasses gender as well, it can include attraction to more than one or more than two genders and is occasionally defined as such. Others, such as the American Institute of Bisexuality, say that the term is an open and inclusive term for many kinds of people with same sex and different sex attractions and that, 
The scientific classification by sexual only addresses the physical, biological sex of the people involved, not the gender presentation. In order to deal with issues related to transphobia and the gender binary, many individuals have taken on terms such as pansexual, omnisexual, an alternative word for pansexual, or polysexual in place of the term bisexual. The American Institute of Bisexuality argues that these terms describe a person with homosexual and heterosexual attractions, and therefore people with these labels are also bisexual, and that the notion that bisexuality is a reinforcement of a gender binary is a concept that is founded upon anti-science, anti-enlightenment philosophy that has ironically found a home within many queer studies departments at universities across the Anglophone world. Eisner agrees with this view, stating that Allegations of binarism have little to do with bisexuality's actual attributes or bisexual people's behavior in real life, and that the allegations are an attempt to separate the bisexual and transgender communities politically. Topic: <laughs> Consequences. Whether intentional or not, transphobia and cissexism have severe consequences for the target of the negative attitude. Transphobia creates significant stresses for transgender people which can lead them to feel shame, low self-esteem, alienation and inadequacy. Transgender youth often try to cope with the stress by running away from home, dropping out of school, using drugs or self-harming. Suicide rates among transgender people are thought to be especially high, because of how they are treated by their families and by society. Topic. Problems at home and at school The 2015 United States Transgender Survey, the largest such survey ever carried out with 27,715 respondents, found that 1 in 10 respondents suffered transphobic violence at the hands of a family member and 8% were kicked out of their homes for being transgender. The majority of those who were openly transgender or perceived as transgender at school were victims of some form of mistreatment on account of this, including verbal abuse 54%, physical attacks 24%, and sexual assault 13%. 17% experienced such severe mistreatment that they had to leave school. Support from one's community or family was correlated with more positive outcomes related to mental health and social functioning. 62% of lawsuits involving transgender people state that defendants face family problems. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Poverty and homelessness. Nearly one-third of U.S. transgender people responding to the 2015 U.S. Transgender Survey lived in poverty, compared to 14% of the population. During the 12 months prior to the survey, 30% of employed transgender people were either fired or mistreated for being transgender, from verbal abuse to sexual violence. 30% had been homeless at some point in their life, and 12% had been homeless during the previous year. Family and community support were correlated with significantly lower rates of homelessness and poverty. Topic. Violence and harassment During the year prior to the 2015 U.S. survey, 46% of respondents had been verbally harassed and 9% had been physically attacked for being transgender. 10% had been sexually assaulted during the previous year, and 47% had been sexually assaulted at some point in their life. Topic. In public restrooms During the year prior to the 2015 U.S. survey, 12% of respondents reported being verbally harassed in a public restroom. 1% reported being sexually assaulted in a public restroom for being transgender, and 1% reported being otherwise physically assaulted for being transgender. 9% reported being denied the right to use a public restroom consistent with their gender. Topic. Health During the year prior to the 2015 U.S. survey, 59% of respondents reported avoiding using a public restroom out of fear of violence or harassment. 32% limited the amount they ate or drink in order to avoid using a public restroom. 
8% reported suffering a urinary tract infection, kidney infection, or other kidney problem as a result of avoiding public restrooms. 33% reported having negative experiences with a healthcare professional related to being transgender, such as verbal harassment or denial of treatment. 23% reported that they did not seek treatment for a condition out of fear of being mistreated, while 33% did not seek treatment because they were unable to afford it. During the month prior to the survey, 39% of American transgender people experienced major psychological distress, compared to 5% of the general population of the United States. 40% had attempted suicide at some point in their life, compared to 4.6% of the American population. Family and community support were correlated with far lower rates of suicide attempts and of major psychological distress. A study conducted on transgender women of color in San Francisco has shown a higher correlation between transphobia and risk of transgender women engaging in HIV risk behavior. The study shows that the transgender youth face social discrimination, and they may not have a social role model. The young adults in this group have shown a higher risk of engaging in unprotected receptive anal intercourse when the exposure to transphobia is high. Therefore, as per the study shows a correlation between transphobia and high risk of HIV. Topic. Mental health People who are transgender are more likely to experience some type of psychological distress because of the harassment and discrimination that comes with transphobia. Student affairs administrators in higher education conducted a nationwide survey on college campuses examining the psychological effects on transgender people, with a sample size of 86. Out of these 86 participants, 54% stated they have attended psychological counseling before and 10% had been hospitalized for reasons related to mental health. The final results of the study show that over twice as many participants who considered themselves transgender 43% had engaged in self-injurious behavior, versus those who considered themselves male or female 16%. .According to Virapaksha, Muralidhar, and Ramakrishna, suicide attempts among transgender people globally range from 32% to 50%. In India, 31% to 50% of transgender people have tried to commit suicide before age 20. 50% of transgender people in Australia and 45% of those in England have attempted suicide at least once. In the United States, suicide attempts reported by transgender and gender nonconforming adults exceed the rate of the general population, 41% versus 4.6%. In San Francisco alone, the suicide rate among transgender people is 32% overall, and for those under age 25 it is 50%. According to the study Transphobia Among Transgenders of Color by the University of California San Francisco, transphobia affects the psychological vulnerability of transgender people of color as compared to those of other ethnicities. Acts of transphobia such as undue denial of services, unfair dismissal from workplaces or stigmatization have far-reaching effects on the subjects such as low self-esteem, underperformance, stress, withdrawal or even depression. When it comes to the minorities, who are already proven to be undergoing various forms of discrimination, the consequences are even more exaggerated. Transgender people of color are more significantly associated with depression than their white counterparts. Topic. See also Topic. References Topic. Further reading Thematic Report on Discrimination Against Trans and Intersex People on the Grounds of Sex, Gender Identity and Gender Expression, The European Commission, 2012. Topic. External links Remembering Our Dead Survivor Bashing – Bias Motivated Hate Crimes Translatina Documentary 2010.